What's going on everybody? Welcome to another edition of Axe Creation. Today we're going to be looking at Tool's Stinkfest. And I get a lot of requests for this song, which makes sense because if you haven't played a lot of Tool or looking to get into learning how to play a lot of Tool, this is the perfect song. I always recommend it for everybody. It gives you a taste of a lot of the playing style and techniques of Adam Jones. You have your power chords, your sus chords, use of dissonance, you have riff variation, dead notes, so there's a lot of things that Jones does all in this one song and overall it's not too complicated to play as some of their later stuff and it's more of a you know song format that we can all get down on. So before we get started we are in a drop D tuning. I'm playing my VGS Evertune bridge running into the Line 6 HD Pro. You know, great story about the, the Evertune bridge. I've had over the last month I've had several gigs and several rehearsals and I'm on the same set of strings and I haven't tuned it once. Throughout all those gigs and all those rehearsals, I haven't tuned it once, which is pretty crazy. So if you're not familiar with the Evertune, go check it out. But I definitely need to change my strings because they're completely dead and they sound like garbage. But we'll get through the lesson anyway. So Stinkfest, we're in 4-4. We're going to start, we're going to bend this note on the first, on the second fret, I'm sorry. And this rhythm permeates the entire song. You have this. Even later on in the song, you'll hear that rhythm again. But the way we do this, you want to bend it up and then let the note come down and wobble it around a little bit. Almost give it a secondary bend. To kind of bring out that rhythm of life. So you can do that four times. And then the verse kicks in. Here's some riff variation, some dynamic play. We're going to play some single notes. I like to play it all on the low string. Right? So we have the two hits on the second fret, and then we have a dead note in the second fret. And then I like to fret the D, fifth fret of your A string, or you can play an open D. It's your preference. I like to fret the note. So you have this. Not the most complicated or intricate version of using dead notes, but it's an introduction nonetheless. So you go through that a couple times, and then the verse riff changes again, some more riff variation. Back to the original riff of the song, the opening riff, except this time it's all palm muted. And you're going to do the bend, but now I attack the notes to keep that rhythm going through the palm mute. That's going to be the next aspect of the riff that before it goes into the chorus. And all you're doing is playing some open strings, B and G or B, G and D. And then the E power chord, the second fret of our low string. And here you have some subtle variation within the riff itself. You're going to play the open strings three times. And then you're going to switch to the low open power chord. So you have... And then you're going to do that, you're going to shorten that by one. So you're going to do two of the open strings, then switch to the low strings. And then we're going to put a little ending on it. Alright, two and open. And then the chorus kicks in. You essentially have a couple chords. Second fret, tenth fret, open D, some dead notes, and then a little hammer on two and three. So we have... You want to slide up to the 10. And when you play the open, three times. Power chord, full power chord, or just the high strings of the power chord, back to the low. Then two dead notes, and then hammer on the three, riff starts over. fourth time you end on the, the D on your A string, fifth fret, and you're gonna bend that note up. Usually when I play it, I'll grab it with my pinky. Because 
everything back repeats back to the intro. Intro, the two verse riffs, everything we just did, repeat again. Rinse and repeat. Okay? So let's pick up second time, right? Chorus ends. that note hang for a good while, right? So we have that note ringing out, and then we play seven on our low string, three, slide up, and when you slide up, I like to play the power chord. Now here's your little sus chord, make a power chord and drop D tuning. And then when you get out of it, let that note ring and fade, you can add some scrapes and some noise because essentially you're going to take you right into the guitar solo. And for the guitar solo, pop on a little delay here, basically we're going to lead into the guitar solo. Right, with our side of our pick, nice, nice little pick scrapes. Right, and then here's the use of dissonance. Uh, the notes you're playing are D and E. You can play them there, you can play them there, you can play them there. All depends on where you think sounds better or where it sounds best on your guitar and your gear. I think Jones plays it way on his low strings. Right? Take the leads out because it's just unnecessary for this. So we have D and then E. And you're just going to pick them out. Slide out of it, and then in between there, there's a little. All right, and then you do it again. And then you're going to move it up a step to E and F. And I like to play the E up to the F. And that's it. Then you go back to the D. Right, and then you have to build up to the nice bridge or breakdown of the song, or whatever you'd like to call it. Right, so there, second fret, the E chord, and then lift up and play the open. Little quick notes. And I like to build up, you know, crescendo with the band, with the music and everything, and you can imply that in the how you play your chord, right? You can just play a single note, power chord. Slowly build your power chord, right? Single note, power chord, three notes, four notes, five notes. Right? Right? And this is our section. Power chords, root fifth octave on E, seventh fret, up to F sharp. Back down the E to your open D. Here, a little minor third shape, right, on our B, ninth fret of our D string, seventh fret of our G string, and do a little hammer on on the D string. Right, and then you can slide down and slide back up and then just repeat it. Now we have this section. I'm gonna switch here so I can control what's going on. I had my foot still here. Great, Greg. Good job. So here we have the little sus two or add nine, however you like to think about these chords. All right. So it's ten, ten, twelve. 
Move it up to four, 12, so 12, 12, 14. 9, 9, 11. And then big normal power chord, drop D power chord, right? 2, 2, 2, 4, 5. All right, so we have. Now, when you go through this, when you reach the breakdown, here's a great use of dynamics. And if you have a volume pedal, this is going to help a lot. Try to dial it in. Or if I depress my pedal, it kind of lowers the gain and volume a little bit. You can pick a little gentler. And you play the same chords, but you want to play it with that decreased dynamic sensitivity. And you're back up at it, right? So when you the one chord that we hold on is just the seventh fret now. Right? And that's gonna repeat, and then you just bring it down to the second fret, and you have a nice little you know chord breakdown. Right? Notice the last time we have 16th notes on the dead notes. And we have five, seven, four. You can either play the full power chord, five string, or the four string power chord. Just stop right there. Either one's gonna sound really good. Use your ears and figure out which one you like the best. So there, notice slight variation in all tool music, all tool songs, where the second time through that you have the 16th notes, first and third, in between those chord stabs. And then you come out of it, and then it's the chorus. Bend that note gradually and just let it fade out, shake it around, get some string noise, add in some other stuff if you like. And that's Stink Fist. It's not too hard of a song. It's a great song to start out with if you're new to Tool. Because it, like I said earlier, it really, it's a great introduction to Adam Jones' playing style. So, the link for the description. The link is in the description below for the tabs. Download them, listen to the song, follow along, print them out. Uh, there's also a link for the playthrough if you want to watch me go through it so you can kind of see everything in live action, not broken apart in the lesson. And as always, let me know what you come up with. Till then, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.